at two nice number theory problems today. So the first one goes like this. We want to find all natural numbers n and k such that n cubed minus 2 equals k factorial. We're going to use the notion of congruence modulo m here. And in fact, we're going to use the fact that k factorial is always going to be congruent to 0 mod 4 if k is bigger than or equal to 4. And when I say 0 mod 4, that means it's a multiple of 4. So let's look at that. Maybe we'll make that the first thing that we notice. For k bigger than or equal to 4, we have k factorial is congruent to 0 mod 4. And why is that? Well, if k is bigger than or equal to 4, then k factorial can be rewritten as k times k minus 1 all the way down to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is clearly a multiple of 4. We've got a 4 right there. Okay, so next up, we want to look at the possible perfect cubes modulo 4. And notice that that's really going to restrict our possibilities for solutions. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a chart. And I'll look at values of n. And then I'll look at values of n cubed modulo 4. Okay. So since I'm working mod 4, I only need to look at four numbers. Really, four equivalence classes. That's 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now let's see what we get. 0 cubed is going to be 0 mod 4. In other words, if n is a multiple of 4, then n cubed is a multiple of 4. So if n is congruent to 1 mod 4, then n cubed is also congruent to 1 modulo 4. If n is congruent to 2 mod 4, then n cubed is congruent to 8 mod 4. 2 cubed is 8. But 8's a multiple of 4, so we get 0 mod 4 here. Okay. And then finally, if n is congruent to 3 mod 4, then n cubed is also 3 mod 4. And we can actually see that very quickly by seeing that 3 is congruent to negative 1 mod 4. But if we take negative 1 cubed, we get negative 1. But again, that's the same thing as 3 mod 4. Now, next up, I want to notice that these are the only possible perfect cubes mod 4. We have 0, 1, and 3. But in order for this to be solvable when k is bigger than or equal to 4, we would need n cubed to be congruent to 2 mod 4. So this statement right here, or this chart right here, and this observation right here implies that there are no solutions with k bigger than or equal to 4. But that means we just need to check a couple of values of k. We'll look at k equals 1, we'll look at k equals 2, and then we'll finally look at k equals 3 and see what we get. So for k equals 1, we have k factorial equals 1 factorial, which is 1, which means we need to solve the equation 1 equals n cubed minus 2. But let's notice that there's kind of obviously no solution to that. That's because in order for there to be a solution, 3 would have to be a perfect cube. Now let's see what we get here. If k is equal to 2, then that makes k factorial equal to 2. But now we need to solve 2 equals n cubed minus 2. But again, n cubed minus 2 equals 2 has no solution. If it did, then 4 would be a perfect cube. And then finally, if k equals 3, then k factorial equals 6, which means we have the equation 6 equals n cubed minus 2, which is the same thing as saying n cubed equals 8, which is the same thing as saying n equals 2. So there we have our solution, k equals 3 and n equals 2, and that's the only such solution. Okay, let's get rid of this, and then we'll look at our second problem. So let's look at the second question. We want to find all m and n, which are, again, natural numbers, such that the square root of m plus 2017 over the square root of n equals 2021. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is rearrange this 
so I can get rid of the square roots as much as possible. So let's see how we can do that. We can rearrange this so we have 2017 over the square root of n equals 2021 minus the square root of m. So I've just moved that square root of m to the right hand side. But now I can square this entire equation and on the left hand side that's going to give me 2017 squared. I'll just write it like that over n equals 2021 squared minus 4042 times the square root of m plus m. So that's just from squaring that binomial. But now I want to notice that this guy right here is a rational number, this guy right here is a rational number, and this guy right here is a rational number. Some of those are obviously natural numbers. But that implies that what's left over also has to be a rational number. In fact, that means that the square root of m is a rational number. But then if the square root of m is a rational number, it's well known that that means that the square root of m is in fact a natural number. But if the square root of m is a natural number, that means m is a perfect square. Let's write it as a squared for some natural number a, like that. Okay, sweet. Now let's go ahead and take that and plug it into our original equation, well really this rewritten original equation, and see what we end up with. So that tells us that 2017 over the square root of n equals 2021 minus the square root of a squared, but that's going to be minus a. But now notice that this entire right hand side is most definitely an integer. But if the right hand side is an integer, that means the left hand side is an integer. But if the left hand side of n is an integer, that means, well, really two things. n is a perfect square, so we could write that down real quick. n equals b squared, kind of with a parallel argument to what we did with m. And the square root of n divides 2017. But notice that the square root of n now is just b. So we have 2017 over b is an integer, but 2017 is prime. So you can check that, it's not too hard to check. The fact that 2017 is prime tells us that b has to be equal to 1 or 2017. That's the only way we can get an integral value out of this quotient. Okay, so if b equals 1, notice that that means that n equals 1. If b equals 2017, that means that n equals 2017 squared. Then let's see what values of m correspond to those two values of n. So we can do that by plugging this information up here. So we've got 2017 equals 2021 minus a. We can rearrange that real quick to see that a has to be equal to 4. But now if a is equal to 4, that means that m is equal to 16. And that gives us our first pair for a solution. We have n equals 1 m equals 16. Now let's look at this other case. If n is 2017 squared, so that's going to transform this equation into 1 equals 2021 minus a, like that, because we've divided out the 2017 over on the left hand side. But let's see. That means that a is equal to 2020. But notice that n is a squared, or m is a squared, so that means that m is 2020 squared. And that gives us our second pair of solutions, or our second ordered pair, which is a solution. n equals 2017 squared, and m equals 2020 squared. And that's a good place to stop.